Hello everybody, Prow here, and we have another new beta that came out on Wednesday. Yeah, I'm a little bit late on this one too. They'll be on time going forward. And I wanted to go over some key and big pieces of news that are coming with this beta. And there is some big news. As we get started, if you would like to be a huge channel supporter, big time, go ahead, click that like button down below. Be sure to drop me a comment at the end of the video and click that share button to share this video with your friends and family. Those things actually help the video get seen by a lot more people awesome way to help support the channel now just to make sure everybody understands we are in the latest beta here this should not be confused with the caves and cliffs experimental toggle and the non-beta version of the game these features require you to enroll in the insider program and download the beta to actually test now we're actually going to start off here with the big one the huge one the one that adds 64 blocks of depth underneath your feet and in existing worlds. That's right, the first change here is showing itself on Bedrock before Java Edition. So we get to test it out first, and it's an answer to the question of what happens to my old world when 1.18 comes out. The answer is that the chunks you already have loaded, like say your main base area, like I have here, will have all of the Bedrock that used to be at the bottom of the world around Y level zero, change over to deep slate or stone. We are in the non-converted world right now. Let's see if I can find one of the caves that I have like covered over here. And I think a lot of them were like in this area. And we're gonna see if we can get, make our way down to the bottom of the world. And it looks like I have found a problem on the guide world here. Look at all these guys. Oh, hey. Um, let's make these dudes go into lava. That sounds like the, the, the right thing to do. If I can even move. Go into lava. Okay, now that I've massacred a bunch of llamas, and I'll actually have to go back and do that on the actual guide world, because we're in a uh, copy, local copy of the world that we're able to get in the beta right now. Um, we want to dig ourselves down to bedrock level. There's lava right there. Maybe we'll dig down this direction. Hopefully we don't hit any lava on our way down. And we did. And I'm down here at the bottom of the world and we have found bedrock. And as many of you probably know, you cannot break bedrock unless you use cheaty ways to do it, right? So you can't mine down here. And if you were to mine down there, there's going to be void. There's nothing there. You fall through and die if you find a way to get rid of that bedrock and go down. But on the Caves and Cliffs experimental mode, we can go out of our world here. And just in case I need to go back to the non-experimental mode, I, I made a copy of the world. So we will toggle the Caves and Cliffs experimental toggle and we'll click on play beta and we should see a change. And as you can see that change, we're now standing on Deep Slate. And now underneath here, we should have a Caves and Cliffs generated world. That's not all though. So a message that somebody found from King B Dogs that he posted on Discord, I believe. Uh, King B Dogs is one of the Minecraft devs. States that this will be optional, meaning that if you have an older world that, for whatever your reason is, that you don't want to convert the already loaded chunks to the stone material and be able to get down underneath those chunks, you're not going to have to do it. You're going to have the option when you go to play the world to not convert current chunks over. So for the few of you that may be concerned about that, no worries. You're not going to have any problems. Minecraft is giving you the option. And I think this is awesome for them to do. It is 100% the right decision because Minecraft is all about people playing in the way that they want to play. So if somebody doesn't want their world to convert over to the new caves and cliffs when it comes to things that they've already loaded, I think that's a smart decision. So now let's see if we're able to just dig down and dig our way into a new cave system. And look, we already are. Oh, dude, this is so awesome. There is a lush cave underneath the guide world. Who would have ever known right underneath the guide town? There is a lush cave. Ooh. Oh, and then what's down here? Okay, let's take a look. I'm kind of curious to see. Look at all of this. Wow, this is like a whole new world. I shouldn't even need to reset the guide world. Don't worry, I'll be resetting the guide world. But, um, wow. This is such an awesome area. I need to see this with RTX on, hold on. And now I can just say, wow. 
look at what this place looks like the glow berries the uh, glow lichen the glow of the lava this the guide world would have been so much different if we would have had these things from the start this is so cool all right let's switch back over to regular mode and let's take a little bit further look at some other things but yes if you have an existing world you may find something as awesome as this underneath so you may not need to reset your world people i know a lot of people love to hit the reset button whenever new generation comes out because they want to experience all the new stuff you don't have to do that you can have brand new stuff right under your feet and you don't even know what it is and you know what just for fun let's see what's underneath blue jay's base i'm kind of curious um as suspected in typical blue jay fashion the underside of his base is broken <laughs> we're swimming in water right now and there there's lava in here touching the water so this may actually be some sort of a i don't know if it's some sort of generation bug or what but i'm actually glad we took a look at this because this is something that mojang should take a look into these caves ended up filling with water because his base is in a water-like area but for some reason that water did not interact with uh with this lava at all super interesting and actually the caves kind of generated in a fashion that don't look like they would be waterlogged caves they look just like regular caves i feel would i don't know if there's supposed to be a difference or not and also these stone columns are not supposed to come down this far so i'm not quite sure what this is about either uh hopefully this is some good data for the mojang team to figure out like what is going on with this i have no clue what the deal with this is what is this yeah it's just there's stone generation here so this is their first iteration of it their first try so i wouldn't really get too concerned with it quite yet because obviously they're still going to be working out some kinks um, but hopefully somebody on the mojang team sees this and they know it's something to look out for when they you know do the next version of this now there is another big change that occurred and got pointed out in the change logs as well which is that they are now blending new chunks and old chunks meaning that if i go out in this way because again we've converted this world over from the um, non caves and cliffs to caves and cliffs and you can only do this in bedrock right now so hopefully we got some java players taking a look and seeing things that maybe could be happening on java later on so you guys can also be a part of the feedback process on this because i want everybody to be part of the feedback process is if we travel out far enough to unload a chunks and i really don't know how far that's going to be so we're just going to have to look for them um we should see that the world is getting blended between what is and is not loaded and i think we found a chunk border because this this looks kind of weird look we're missing we're missing the side of the trees here and it looks like they've done a little bit of blending here now i kind of already knew what to look for because pixel rifts did come out with a video um on this exact same thing so this made it easy to find, but you can kind of see here, that's weird, we got a stick just randomly laying there, that we have this blended border. And I believe this kind of looks like another one right here. Let's take a look. This one, I don't know. It's kind of weird what happened here. Oh, wow, look, we have like, there's a mine shaft, like kind of busting out the side of it. And it tried to blend the mine shaft in or out of this area so i don't really know if there was i guess there wasn't a mine shaft here right because this is our this is the existing terrain here and this is the new terrain popping in so i'm not quite sure what's happening here because it's not like we're popping into here and seeing a mine shaft also some very funky things happening with water here and i think pixel rifts kind of saw the same thing where there was some funky stuff going on with water but yeah i i, I can't i can't explain that at all um and then the blending just seems a little rigid to me it seems like that if the game is noticing okay here's a chunk border then it should you know obviously be seeing okay this chunk border um the highest uh solid block or water block is at y63 okay that's ocean so since it's so low and we want to generate land that's so high we're going to do x y and z to make sure that instead of it coming up this quickly maybe it it comes up and like this is where it peaks so it's more of a mountain or they need to apply some sort of new method to actually curving this out because it sticks out a lot it's not bad 
like it's not it's not horrible it's not a straight line so if it if it did get implemented like this would it be the end of the world not really but i think they could do better and this is the first iteration of it so i'm sure that they're going to be working on it and tweaking it as time goes on as people test it and as it makes its way over to java edition as well and th they'll iron some of these things out but in any event i think also i agree with pixel riffs this was a good first attempt and i look forward to seeing what they're able to do with it further as they kind of work on the blending in of the areas i have another huge one for you this is a parody change i have wanted for a while and it has to do with the elytra 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 drop me down in the comments below and let me know your take on that i call it elytra most of the time now on bedrock edition until now you could only activate the elytra while falling downwards specifically meaning that when you jump during that upward mo motion moment you can't activate it so up can't activate down can right so you had to wait until the falling motion actually started this actually makes it harder to take off so i suspect that this will actually help mobile players start flight a lot better and easier also though you may have noticed java players seem like they can like run fly or sort of skip the type thing through the worlds pretty quick with the elytra we should be able to do that now too so let's give it a try okay so here we go normal elytra flight right you just jump off you hit the space bar or the jump button and you can just glide right so before when you're running we had to wait until we were falling to be able to activate the elytra which is kind of what i'm doing right here but now see look we can start flight right away you guys can see that i'm flying immediately so it should mean the takeoff is really easy yeah look at that that's really a lot easier than it was before like oh gosh you could just activate it immediately this is so nice now i've never like done the elytra jumping gliding thing so let's see if we can find a kind of flat-ish area to where uh i don't know how do they do it how do you do it or can you not do it on bedrock i seem to be going slow not fast when i do it maybe maybe i just don't know the trick i don't know somebody let me know down in the comment section below is there a certain way you do it or does it have to do with like maybe there's something different with how java works with like forward momentum well, we're in the water now and that makes me think i've heard that it's possible although hard to get out of water with the elytra on so maybe we'll test that real quick and i don't really know anything to do other than like spam the jump button and the fly button at the same time and that doesn't seem to be working nope and you can't activate it while you're in water. So it's not going to work like Java does exactly. But I'm wondering if you can get like any height. Oh, look. Look, we did it. How did I do that? Let's try it again. Almost get it. So close. Why is it? Come on, do it, do it, do it. Oh, look, see, see. I did it again. I got it again. Okay. I think I might understand it. So you have to have a pretty good upward angle on it. You have to hit it at the right time, the exact right time. It's too hard to see how to do it in first person, really. Oh, I did get it in first person. <laughs> this is awesome. We can fly out of water. Oh, gosh. I don't, it's, it seemed a little bit easier in third person view. Let's kind of start down again. But like, if you look up at a pretty decent angle and then you could hit jump, the spam, the jump button and the rockets at just the right time, like right as your feet are about to poke out. You can get it. I did it again. I did it again. Okay. Yep. I think I know how to do it. I think I know how to do it. So kind of have like an angle. And I'm doing it in the first person now too. Kind of have an angle that's maybe about like 70, degree, 70 degrees up. Like you don't want to be looking kind of straight-ish. You want to be looking not straight up, but mostly upwards like this. Don't run. Like don't like do the swimming motion like this. Like just actually like regular kind of like walking motion. And then... When you feel like your character's gotten all the way up before it's about to bob back down, that's when you spam your jump button and your rocket button. And I got it again. Awesome. Well, have fun practicing that. That was really fun to figure out. So existing super flat worlds now have, if they're converted over, the new height limit available. So you should be able to go enable caves and cliffs toggle, go into the world, 
And while you still will be at like the normal Y level, now you could build above the normal Y level 256. You weren't able to do that with converted super flat worlds before. And there we go. We are above Y level 256 now. Um, they do not have any additional terrain below them though, as you see. And I don't think there's like any changes to unloaded chunks in super flat worlds that get converted over either. I think it just, yeah, it looks like it just stays that normal level forever. But if you make a new super flat world, but if you go to create a new super flat world, like here, we'll type in super flat, we'll change this, we'll change this, we'll put this on flat, show coordinates, caves and cliffs, create. Now you actually start at the new bottom of the world. We're all the way down at Y level negative 60 now, which means you've got like 300 and whatever blocks upwards that you can build things from here. And actually until now, copper for whatever reason has not been able to be found above level Y level 64. So they have fixed that in the betas and you can now find copper as high as Y level 96. So there was also an update to mob AI where if a mob is able to catch on fire they should avoid walking through it and if they're not able to catch on fire then they should as normal be able to walk through it so let's do a little test here let's put ourselves into survival mode and let's see what happens if we oh i need to i need to make it nighttime hold on even better i just put a roof over top of us so i should be able to spawn in a zombie after i put it on some type type of difficulty and now, nope, he's still, he still definitely walked through fire. He 100% walks through fire. Mob AI, not fixed. Ah! And now I'm on fire. So now the question is, is, is it because he couldn't path? There's no way to path find out. So if I do this and then place him, will he try to get me? Nope. Nope. Doesn't care about fire. Does not care about fire at all. All right. What you got for me, creeper? All right, Creeper, let's see what you got. Oh, look, look. So it just didn't work with zombies for some reason. But he still, he still walked close enough to it to catch on fire. What happens if we put one in there now? Stop chasing me. Yeah, so they do pathfind around it. But not all the way around it. Here, what do you do? Oh, look, look, he won't get me. <laughs> that's cool so it looks like they just didn't properly apply it to all the mobs because the, the zombie dude he did not care at all this guy this dude right here zero cares oh god he doesn't care ah! Go. get out of here oh gosh this is not gonna be good Ow. i survived I mentioned this in my recent uh, update video because there was changes to iron farms. Go check out the full changes in the uh, latest Minecraft Bedrock update video for what those were. But there is an issue where the iron golems would be able to spawn on non-solid blocks, things like open fence gates, beds, and others. And that has been fixed in the beta. Now, also one final note, Render Dragon was recently introduced for Android ARM V7 devices. And after some brief testing, they've decided to remove that. So if you were playing before on one of those types of devices in the beta, and you were having performance issues with Render Dragon on mobile, Mojang has heard you. And it sounds like they are going to do some further optimization before testing again. So big shout out to all my mobile peeps who did some testing in last week's beta. Thank you because you're helping them find these issues and make sure that when it comes to to the uh, Render Dragon going live on mobile that you guys are going to get the best experience. Now that is all the important changes from this latest beta. There were some other ones that had to do with like the character creator and a couple of beta only world gen bugs. If you want to see the full change log, just check the description down below for a link to go over to it and take a look at some of the things that maybe I didn't cover. If you enjoy these beta and update videos and haven't already subscribed, be an all-star right now by clicking that subscribe button. If you haven't clicked that like button yet, it's right down there below the video. The little thumbs up. Show us some love. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know how you feel about this week's beta changes and what changes you expect to see in the next beta release. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!